the WNBA All-Star Game rosters have been announced, so I thought this would be a good time to talk about which players got snubbed or whatnot. But I will be fair. If I'm saying a player should be in the All-Star Game, I'm going to mention players that they should have been replaced for because there were only 12 spots since the, the Olympic roster is an automatic qualifier. Kennedy Carter not being on the All-Star team is a huge miss. I really don't understand this at all. Her 15 points per game might not sound too crazy, but it has to be put into context. She's shooting 54% from the field. Compared that to All-Stars like Alicia Gray, Kelsey Mitchell, or Dewana Bonner who are shooting less than 43% from the field. I like Alicia Gray, but she is no Kennedy Carter. Neither is Kelsey Mitchell. Kennedy Carter was also coming off the bench early in the season, which Teaspoon eventually stopped doing because she's clearly the best guard on the team. When she started getting starter minutes, her numbers shot way up. On top of how well she's playing this season, just from an entertainment perspective, you have to put someone like Kennedy Carter in the all-star game. She's one of the most exciting players to watch and one of the most talented too, but we got robbed out of seeing her play. I hate to be that guy, but a part of me does wonder if this was a IT being left off the dream team type situation. Maybe this is their way of punishing Kennedy Carter for roughing up Caitlin. Natasha Cloud and Skylar Diggins not being on here tells me that defense and passing don't matter to coaches when it comes to all-star voting. Natasha Cloud is one of the best perimeter defenders and is second in the league in assists. But I don't think Natasha and Skyler being left out is nearly as bad as Kennedy Carter being left off. And it's certainly not as bad as Ezzy Magbagor being snubbed. Ezzy Magbagor was going to miss the All-Star game because she had to join Team Australia and practice with them. So if that's the reason for leaving her off, I can kind of understand it. But if the coaches left her off, because they were saying she wasn't good enough to be an all-star. That's a complete joke. Some longtime WNBA fans are annoyed by new fans voting in players that probably shouldn't be there. But I would argue the coaches are even worse because they are supposed to be completely objective, but it definitely doesn't seem that way. There's a lot of people as he could have replaced, but Bree Jones making it over her is especially egregious. She is losing to Magma Gore in every statistical category besides field goal percentage. And that's really only because she almost never shoots threes. Last but not least, I will get to Dijonay Carrington. There's a lot of talk about whether or not she got snubbed. This one is a little tricky for me because it's hard to name a player she should take out. I don't think she's been as good as Alicia Gray or Kayla McBride. You could argue Kelsey Mitchell, but it would make more sense for Kennedy Carter to take that spot. If I had to choose someone I would probably say Dewana Bonner. It's basically a question of who do you think has been the second best player for the Connecticut Sun? But I will say, it does seem weird that all the more controversial guards in the league were the ones that were left off. Maybe it's just a coincidence, but I just find that very interesting. But what do y'all think? Who do you believe was snubbed from the All-Star game? I'd love to hear your thoughts.